Okay, today we had a client bring us a chair that has a broken leg and they did quite a number on it. The pieces are broken out so bad we can't save them or use them in the repair process and you can see there's a slight split in the leg. The threaded inserts are still embedded in the wood and it looks like the best thing we're going to be able to do for this leg is to replace that broken section with a good quality hardwood to go in that section. So we put the wood on there that we're going to use and trace around it to make a line for cutting. And we do the same on the top of the leg. Just in, We don't want to take out any more than we absolutely have to. So we trace around just the section that will give us that size piece of wood to fit right where we want it to go. Now, when we're doing this, you want to make sure that your cuts don't go past where the saw blade teeth will extend. All right, the next thing we want to do is use a reciprocating or an oscillating tool with the saw blade on it to reach into those tight corners of the cuts where the table saw blade could not reach. And we use a piece of marking tape on the edge of the blade to mark the depth so that we don't cut any deeper than what that cut needs to be. Okay, once we have the vertical cuts done as deep as they need to go, we then do the horizontal cut across the base of the piece. And the blade should match right up to where we finish cutting with the other so that the piece comes out. All right, now that the piece is removed, we have a few saw blade lines and ridges left over on the inside of our block area. And we can just trim those out with our oscillating cutter to make a nice flat surface everywhere the cuts are made. All right, now we want to take our replacement wood block and put it inside to make sure it has a nice flush fit. And we want it to sit just slightly higher than the rest of the wood. The next thing we want to do is we want to put an anchor pin or dowel in the bottom of that block so that it will lock into the leg. The next thing we do is we want to measure the drill bit depth against the halfway mark of the dowel so we don't drill in any further than one half of the length of the dowel. So we drill that in the very center of our wood replacement wood block. And then we'll do the same in the chair leg itself where it's going to fit. Now we will use a dowel center in the hole that we just drilled in our block and we will press it up tightly against the chair leg, tap it with a hammer, and the dowel center will make a mark that shows us precisely where our drill bit needs to go to drill the hole to the halfway point of that dowel. Once again, we use the tape as a measuring guide as to how deep to drill the hole. Now we'll put our dowel in to do a dry fit to make sure everything fits okay, and it's a perfect fit. It slides in nicely. The dowel pin will make a great lock for that block of wood to give it added strength and support so it doesn't pull out. Now it's time to use a good quality wood glue. We like tight bond, and we will apply a generous amount of wood glue on all of the surfaces and the dowel pin where they're going to fit on the chair leg and we slide it in place. It's always a good idea to have some ooze coming out of that glue so that you know you've made firm contact and the glue has uh, adequately uh, placed wherever it's supposed to be. After we've wiped off the excess, we can use some pinch clamps to pinch that glue block tightly in place as a clamp, and we're going to let that dry overnight. 
All right, now we check it to make sure we have good tight seams all the way around where that block fits. It looks like we've got a nice tight fit here and we need to fill the seams so that we don't have any cracks showing. And the product we like to use with this is called Quickwood. You can find this online or at Home Depot, they carry it. Excellent filler, very strong, has excellent adhesive properties. And all you have to do is use a box cutter blade to just cut off a certain amount of what you think you're going to need. And you'll notice as you look at the piece that it's got two different colors. It's like it's an epoxy. It has a center color and an exterior color. And all you do is you knead those together. And we find that rolling it back together very quickly like a, a snake and then rolling it back into a ball is one of the fastest ways to get it to mix because sometimes it's a little hard to get it started at first when it's really stiff. All right, next we will use the quick wood that has been mixed and kneaded thoroughly. And we, we just press that into place very tightly. We don't want to have any bubbles or gaps and just press it in as tightly as you can and removing the excess as you go. But just press it tightly in place and leave a little bit of a ridge on top that the sander can take care of. All right, now we are filling all of the seams all the way around wherever there's a cut. We've got a good fill here. Uh, we've got a 45 minute cure time so we can take our time and do a good job in making sure that it's nice and fully filled. Once the quickwood has fully cured, we can just take our orbital sander and sand it all down. And now we're going to sand the block down to where it's flush and level with the existing surrounding wood. Sanding our seam clean. We want a perfectly flat surface. We don't want any gaps or holes wherever the fill has been. So we sand that until it's perfectly level. Once we have our surface all sanded down, we will use our oscillating sander with a finer grit sandpaper to just do a final sanding to make it very smooth. One of the things we do here at the very end is we use that sander to just go over the corners and edges so that they're not so sharp to give it a nice, clean, smooth seam. Now we notice that the inside of this leg where the bolts go in is tapered. You'll notice the existing leg has that same type of taper. So we measure that off and we're going to sand out that corner to match the existing shape of a taper, just like the opposing leg. One of the fastest ways to grind off that taper is just use the edge of a belt sander on the curved edge and begin grinding in up into the marks that we have made with our pen. Now to make that grind out area perfectly smooth and flat, we just run it over a table bench sander for just a few seconds. Now we'll take our oscillating sander to just polish up the edges a little bit so they're nice and smooth and rounded and we don't have any rough edges. Now we have a tapered area on the leg that is exactly the same as the one on the opposite leg. We compare them and they're ready to go. 
Now the next thing we want to do is we want to mark the holes where the bolts are going to go back in and we use the broken pieces to give us an exact measurement as to where they will fit. We just simply smooth down a pencil, put it in the hole and make the mark where the top hole goes. And then we will use the other part of that piece where the other hole once went to make that mark as well so that we have a precise fit. Now this next part can be a little tricky. The threaded inserts that go into the wood need to be just slightly larger than the diameter of the hole that you drill. And we, as a rule of thumb, we measure the drill bit against the shank of the threaded inserts, the smooth part without the threads. But depending on the hardwood, you may have to make the hole a little bit bigger to get it to fit. And so we measure the shank first and then measure the half or the depth of the threaded insert against the drill bit and use a piece of tape to mark that on the drill bit so that we don't drill any deeper than we need to. Next, we want to put our threaded inserts inside, and these particular inserts don't have a notch for a screwdriver. So what we do is we use a bolt and we put two nuts on the end of the bolt and then bind them together with a couple wrenches so that they're very tight and they can't slip or move. Then we want to put our threaded insert on the end of that bolt and we can begin to screw the threaded insert inside the hole. And we want to do this very carefully because we don't want to split the wood or force it to be in too tight of a hole or you then you run into all kinds of problems. And it looks like the hole we've drilled out here is adequate for it and it's going in just right. All right, once you have that threaded insert in as far as you want it to go, which is usually just slightly less than flush with the wood, you simply just unscrew the bolt and it'll come right out, leaving the insert in place. Now we're going to screw another one in here. And unfortunately, there was a little piece of wood that chipped out of the corner, but we can solve that with a little bit of quick wood. So we'll go ahead and proceed to putting the insert in place. In this particular model, the manufacturer did put the inserts in a little bit too close to the end of the stock on the wood, which is not a good idea. It creates a weak point and inherent weakness for future splitting, but we've put it in carefully enough on this one. I think it'll hold. So we pack a little bit of quick wood onto the minor chip right on the very top corner there. And after it hardens, we sand it out smooth and do a little bit of light finish sanding on the rest of the piece and it's ready for staining. Okay, now we like to use the blend all powder stains and whenever you're matching color on a piece like this uh, you want to layer it on in color layers and you always want to start with your lightest color first so you study the wood see what the lightest color is and then you mix your colors to match that and here we're using salem maple and a mix of medium dark walnut and it seems to be a pretty good match for the lightest color and we just paint that right on the wood using a little bit of uh, clear shellac as our medium mixed with the powder stains. And we'll get that all set up here in just a few minutes. All 
All right, now the next thing we want to do is just take a Preval aerosol sprayer and put some clear shellac in it. And we just spray that over our first coat of stain and let that set up for a few minutes. All right, now the next thing we want to do is we want to put in our wood graining back in the wood. And we're using a mixture of black and Van Dyke brown. And we'll use a fan brush dipped in a little bit of shellac to mix up the stain. And we just want to make some very light strokes to mimic the grain. Now, because this is on the inside of the chair frame, nobody's going to see it. So I'm not putting as much detail into this as I normally would if it were on the outside of the chair leg where everybody could see it. But up on the inside, we'll just do a basic job, put some grains in there, and it'll look just like the rest of the natural wood. Okay, once our graining is done, we'll touch up the edges, make sure everything looks uniform, use a little bit more shellac to spray a nice smooth finished coat over the whole thing. And after this point, we want it to dry completely and cure overnight. All right, now that the finish is cured overnight, we've got a good color, good match. We're gonna use some 4 aught steel wool, steel wool with uh, quadruple zero grade. And we want to take down that sheen a little bit on that finish so that it matches the sheen of the rest of the leg. And we just rub that carefully. And as you can see, we don't have any seam marks. We don't have any lines. There's virtually no detection that this extra block of wood has ever been spliced into there. And it met, turned out matching very well. All right, now we will get the hardware out and put the chair leg back into place. And let's see how our bolts fit. Hopefully, if we've drilled the holes in the right places, they'll be a perfect fit and they'll align properly and it will be a good, tight, strong joint that will last for many years. Looks like they do match and they fit in there just as precisely as we hoped. We just tighten them down snugly. We don't want to over tighten them because we don't want to damage the wood or damp pull the uh, threaded insert out. All right, the chair leg is now installed. There's no detection of any damage. There's no seams or edges and the client is happy.